So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Don Haas, the uh, Director of Teacher Programming at the Paleontological Research Institution and one of your hosts for tonight. And I'll um, ask Rob to introduce himself next. Uh, I am Rob Ross. I am Associate Director for Outreach at the Paleontological Research Institution. And um, I will then pass it on to Liz. Uh, my name is Liz Hermson. Uh, I am a research scientist at the Paleontological Research Institution, and I uh, also am helping to build bulk web content. Um, yeah, that's it. I will pass it on to John. Hi, everybody. My name is John Hendricks, and I am Associate Director of Science Communication at the Paleontological Research Institution. And um, I think. Uh, we're just going to dig right in. We are uh, live on YouTube, which means that the recording will be immediately available. And um, uh, I think John's going to give us a, a quick tour of um, the resource. And uh, I think I gave us too much time in the agenda for introductions. <laughs> just give me a sec here, Don, and I'll sure. get it loaded up. Okay, everybody. So I just put a I just put a link. Well, maybe I need a www. Hopefully that'll work. So I just added the link for Earth at Home to the chat. So this is the website that we're going to be spending some time with uh, here this afternoon for some of you, for this evening for for others of us. Um, as we go through uh, some of these resources that we want to share with you. Um, this evening, you know, please do feel free as, as we're sort of sharing our screens and, you know, going from page to page to kind of highlight what's there to just explore on your own. There's going to be some time at the end for discussion. And in fact, we'd, you know, we'd like you to share something towards the end of this meeting that you found on Earth at Home that you think might be useful for, for whatever purposes. So we do encourage you to kind of just explore around the, the website. Um, as we as we go through things this evening, um, so the first thing that I want to say before jumping into uh, the the Earth at Home website itself is just to say that the the philosophy for the website is to sort of be a one stop shop for Earth science um, materials, and you know it, it's it's a resource for teachers, it's a resource it's a resource for students. It's a resource really for anybody who's interested in learning about the earth science of the place where they live in the in the United States. Um, so again, you're encouraged to follow along or sort of explore on your own as, as we're present, presenting this evening. And with that, I am going to share my screen here. Let me get this going. There we go. Let's see. Okay. Has everyone seen my screen? Okay, thank you. Um, so this is the Earth at Home homepage. Uh, we're just uh, at earthathome.org. Um, before I do anything else, I want to scroll to the bottom of the homepage here and highlight the fact that at the very bottom of every single page on Earth at Home, there is a subscribe um, Box. So if, if you want to be put on the list to find out about updates to the Earth at Home website, please just type your email address in there and hit subscribe. We promise we're not gonna we're not gonna spam you. You'll only hear from us every, you know, once every month or two with updates about the about the Earth at Home resource. So if you'd like to, you know, get on that list and find out when major, you know, chunks of new content are added, please uh, sign up. Um, so Earth at Home has several major components, and you can get to all of these different components on Earth at Home from the top uh, nav bar that's on every single page. So if you get lost along the way here this evening, you know, just come back to the 
um, to the top menu bar on, on Earth at Home, and you'll find what you're looking for. So we're going to spend most of our time uh, today talking about the regional guides, and in particular, the regional guide to the earth science of the Western U.S. and, and Hawaii. Um, I want to skip over it, therefore, for now and start with um, a, a few of these other resources. Mostly, we, we just sort of want to give a quick tour of these so that you all know that they exist. So the first one is the, is the digital encyclopedia. So I'm going to go to that page. Um, the digital encyclopedia is a is a growing uh, online, of course, open access uh, earth science textbook, and so it, it's not finished. But there's a lot of core material there. Um, we're going to continue building it over the over the next few years, um, and it's basically our our goal is for this to basically become equivalent to a you know a, a traditional introductory textbook about earth sciences. Um, everything on, uh, since I didn't mention it earlier, everything on Earth at Home, just about everything, has Creative Commons licensing. And so that means that, you know, you can use it really as you see fit for your, for your own purposes. Um, all the text has Creative Commons licensing, non-commercial licensing, and most of the images are either images that we've produced in-house or that we borrowed from other sources that also similarly have Creative Commons licensing. So really, you know, the resource um, we're trying to make as open and free as possible. Whoop. And go back there to the digital encyclopedia. So, you know, just some of the topics covered on the digital encyclopedia include um, information about, you know, sort of broadly about the uh, earth system science. There's introductory content about minerals, rocks, plate tectonics, and earth hazards. There's information about geologic time and earth history. Um, there's a lot of content on a partner website um, that we've also developed here at PRI um, called the Digital Atlas of Ancient Life. And as part of that project, we have the Digital Encyclopedia of Ancient Life. So this is a really well-developed um, paleontology textbook that we've now sort of connected with um, Earth at Home. So if you've, ever, if you've ever used that resource before, it's sort of part of the Earth at Home family of, uh, of websites. And we have a lot of... Um, we have a lot of content on the digital encyclopedia of, of ancient life already. Um, and then we also have a lot of information on uh, the digital encyclopedia about climate, climate change, um, as well as energy. And that's a resource um, because it's so timely and so important. We're really putting a lot of attention into um, actively de developing it um, right now. I'm going to scroll back up and just give one example of what one of these digital encyclopedia pages look like. Uh, why don't we just look at, you know, under minerals, there's a, there's a page in there about silicate minerals. So um, these are some of the, the so-called rock forming minerals, just to give you sort of a sense of what these pages look like, because they're, it's a, you know, it's a website, we can, you know, do all sorts of fun things like incorporate you know, 3D models right into the page. You'll see, you'll see more of that later. Um, there's videos, uh, new images. This, this is Bowen's reaction series. This is a new image that we made, you know, just for this page as sort of an example of you know, some of the kinds of types of content that we're, we're developing. So it just gives basic information about how silicate minerals are formed and then how they're how they're characterized um, with examples of, you know, different kinds of single chain silicates, double chain silicates, all this stuff. So if you've taken an intro or science class or, you know, you teach it yourself, you, you've heard all about this kind of stuff. Um, we're just trying to kind of put it in, in one place that's in a way that we hope is accessible for, um, you know, educators, maybe teachers who, you know, didn't receive a lot of formal training in earth sciences, but now find themselves in the position of teaching an earth science class. This is a good way to sort of get a refresher. It's also a good introduction for, you know, college students, maybe taking geology 101 and, you know, they, they want a little bit of review before a, before a test or that, that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up to the top here. And again, please, you know, explore whatever you want on your time here and um, we'll, we'll come back to it. A little bit, um, a little bit later on. So that's the that's the digital encyclopedia. Um, Don, I think now we'll hand it off, and um, you can introduce the virtual science part of Earth at Home. So I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, and I will start. <clears throat> so um, 
we have we at PRI have been working on uh, virtual fieldwork for um, many years, um, more than fifteen, um, and uh, this is virtual fieldwork, um, the virtual fieldwork page in Earth at Home, and it uh, gives a bit of uh, an introduction to the philosophy. Um, for one thing, generally, we're not trying to replace actual field work, but uh, trying to catalyze it, trying to um, flip the problem on its head of, of having technology keep people indoors to um, having technology used to um, document and share what's going on in the world outside your classroom door. And uh, um, you can use virtual field work experiences in a lot of different ways. Um, one um, one aspect of it is, is creating your own and comparing uh, what's going on in your place with other places and maybe having your students teach students somewhere else. Um, and um, if you want to compare where you are to, to other places, we have uh, the virtual fieldwork catalog, um, which has experiences around mostly around North America. There's, there's one in Greenland um, and you can click on any one of these and um, see the you know, picture at the top of the page we were just looking at was from the Oregon coast. That's actually Rob right there. Um, and uh, we did this in late February of 2020, last, <laughs> last travels in the, in the before times. Um, but uh, um, this gives you links to uh, various resources associated with that virtual field work experience. Um, and you can go in there and uh, explore that um, and uh, different icons um, represent uh, virtual fieldwork experiences for different um, mostly National Science Foundation funded projects. This is the Critical Zone Observatory um, BFE at um, uh, near Penn State, um, the Shale Hills uh, BFE. There's one down in Puerto Rico for that same project. And as uh, John said, uh, you know, just go ahead and explore around on, um, on the site. And I will also um, point out the um, tools for uh, making uh, virtual field work experiences. Um, lots of uh, very um, inexpensive or, uh, or free resources for um, creating these ways of exploring the world. And I think, is it back to John now? Uh, yeah, back to John for virtual collections. So I'll stop sharing. All right. Thank you, Don. I will go back to the sharing here. There we go. Okay, so I just left off on the digital encyclopedia. I'm going to go back to virtual science. This is where we're at. And I'm just going to scroll down here to virtual collections. So over the past uh, few years um, at PRI, we've been developing a, a really large collection of um, virtual 3D models of uh, fossil, mineral, and rock specimens from our collections. We're a paleontology museum. So, you know, most of the models that we've collected relate to the fossil record, but we have a small collection of um, rocks and minerals as, as well at PRI. So we've been uh, making photogrammetry 3D scans of, of these things over the, the past few years. And we've created one of the largest online collections of at least um, fossil invertebrates uh, that, are, that are available. And right now we have, I think the, the current number is uh, well north of 600 um, 3D models now that are that are are part of our virtual collection. Does anybody? I always like to sort of get tested here on on what we have. Does anybody have a favorite invertebrate fossil? Let's see if let's see if we've got it in the virtual collection. Can somebody throw a, throw something into the chat? Any favorites? Favorite invertebrate fossils? here let's see crinoids let's try crinoids that'd be fun rugos would be fun too but i saw crinoid first let's try that so crinoids are echinoderms let's go under echinoderms let's scroll down i'm gonna close our little donate 
button here. So we've got within the virtual collection, we actually got, we, we jumped over to the digital atlas of ancient life. Again, that's, you know, part of the, that's a PRI website as well. It's related to this project. That's where a lot of the fossil models are held. So um, we're looking for crinoids. I'm gonna scroll down here to class crinoidea. Click on that. See what else we've got there. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of got a whole bunch of crinoid fossils from our collections. We've got a calyx. So all these three D models. You just hit that that um, little triangle. The model comes up. You know, you can move these things around, interact with them. Um, if you're if you're using these for teaching, what's fun is you can just you can make them full screen so everybody in the, you know at the back of the room can easily easily see these. I think this is actually better for in some respect, you know, I'll never say a virtual model is better than the real thing. But when you're teaching, you know, if you if if I was to hold up a little hand sample like this, students at the back of the room wouldn't be able to see it very well. So the thing to do is to show the, you know, you can show one of these fossils that at full screen size and it's easier for for folks to um, to see them. Let me minimize that. All of these models are hosted on Sketchfab. If you're not familiar with Sketchfab, it's kind of like um, like as YouTube is for videos, Sketchfab sort of is for 3D models. So all these models are hosted on Sketchfab and um, almost all of them have um, public domain licensing associated with them. So that means that you can download these models and pretty much do anything that, um, do anything that you want with them. Um, you can 3D print them. We've had people download these things and put them into video games before. So, you, you know, that's great. Uh, you can do with them whatever whatever you want. If you want to download them, really all you do is just hit that little download button and you can download all the files and then, you know, do it, do what you want with it. Um, was there, I thought I saw it, let's just, I saw Rugos Coral too, just to show you it's all, it's all there. We'll go back to uh, the landing page here. Um, so we're looking, uh, uh, Rugos is a kind of uh, extinct coral that lived during the the Paleozoic time, and yeah, we've got here's Rugos corals. We've got you know we've got all kinds of Rugos corals, and they're they're great. Um, you can a lot of detail. You can see the growth lines, and you know we can zoom in on that. So yeah, pretty pretty neat. Um, again, we've got over 600 of these things, so feel free to to explore and um, check it out. So I think the next thing on the list uh, are additional resources. And there's a few different additional resources here I'd like to share. So um, well, what I'm gonna do is just click on, there's, there's quick links to all of these. I'm just gonna go to the additional resources page here. Um, Don in a minute is going to introduce the Earth at Home Science Road Trip. So I'm gonna pass that by. You all are already familiar, I think, with the Earth at Home workshops page, because that might be how you, you found your way here. Um, a little bit later uh, during this presentation, Liz is gonna introduce a, an example of a fossil page from um, the Western US. If you wanna find all the fossil pages that have been developed for different regions of the United States, there is a link here to, to all of those resources. Um, so something that you can, you can check out on your, on your own. We have um, a link here that leads to some quick introductory guides to earth science. That's some of the same content that's covered on the um, uh, that's that's covered on the uh, in the digital encyclopedia. Um, there's an FAQ page, and then uh, there's also you know a couple other pages that I'll highlight. Before I get to those, I understand that there was, I missed a question in the chat. Sorry, I don't have my chat window open. What, what was the question? Uh, the question is, are there rec uh, recreations so that students can get an idea of what uh, fossil creatures looked like while alive? Um, we don't, so we don't have models like, so uh, really good question. All of the models that we have are based, are scans of the real specimens that we have on, um, you know, that, that we've made from specimens in our museum, but there are a lot of really amazing recreations that have been made uh, by other folks and uploaded to Sketchfab. So you can find similar kinds of interactive uh, reconstructions of ancient creatures on Sketchfab. And I encourage you to, to search that site for them. There, there's all kinds of really cool stuff on there. 
um, that are interactive in the same way that our that our three D models of the real specimens are interactive. Does that? I hope that uh, covers the question. Okay. Yeah, we can come back to it later and, and discuss it a little bit more as well. Um, Okay, so a couple of things that I want to show you here at the bottom of this page. One are Earth Science, um, our, our page about Earth Science Quick Facts. I'm going to click on that. So we've developed for every state in the country, well, for, thus far for about uh, a little over half of the states in the country, and eventually we'll get to, the, to full coverage, um, quick fact pages um, about the, the earth science of each state. And so let's go down here. Let's go to, since we're focusing on the West today, let's, let's I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find the quick fact page for California. I must have, you know, where, let's see, what happened to California? Let's go to, um, let's see here, where should we go? Let's go to Oregon. So if we go to the um, quick fact page for Oregon, what we're gonna find is the geologic map. We've been creating geologic maps for every single uh, state as we, as we build up Earth at home. So these are new uh, GIS based maps that we've created in house. We've tried to, lots of times geologic maps uh, try to show a lot of different um, information. We've tried to sim create simplified geologic maps that um, only color code different places on the map based on the ages of bedrock exposed at the at the surface. And so this is a quick way for you know for 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 a person to look at a geologic map and find out the ages of the um, of the rocks, setting aside things like different rock types, like sedimentary rocks versus metamorphic versus igneous rocks being colored or, or having different colors. So. Um, you know, in this, uh, for all of our geologic maps, we color coded them um, in a in a standard way across all the different states. So, Cenozoic aged rocks are always yellow in color. Mesozoic rock aged rocks are always different shades of green, and then Paleozoic rocks are are different shades of blue. And you know, when Precambrian rocks are present, they're colored orange. There, there's none present um, here. Uh, so we've been making these new maps. They all have Creative Commons licensing, so do with them what you wish. These quick fact pages also have information about the state, uh, you know, the official state uh, fossil of, of every state, the, the state official state rock, um, state minerals, um, state gems, if the states have a gem, uh, official state gem. We've also been creating new uh, topographic maps that, again, have Creative Commons licensing, and you can, you can do with them what you wish. These pages also have information about, you know, for example, what's the highest point in each uh, state for, for Oregon, it's Mount Hood. And of course the lowest point uh, in Oregon is along the, is along the coastline. Um, and then at the bottom of each one of these quick back pages, we also have places that, uh, that folks can visit both um, museums um, as well as natural natural places for example John Day fossil beds in in, in uh, Kimberly Oregon okay so I'm going to go back to that page I was on we're back to the additional resources page uh, we've created a page that's all about um, the geologic time scale and the one thing I want to you know we, we've got a time scale here that you can use for whatever, you know, for whatever you wish. Again, it has Creative Commons licensing and all that. Most of these images do. We've also created a series of um, sort of windows on, on this page that highlight uh, different intervals of geologic time and the major uh, events that happened during those time intervals with respect to both their fossil record as well as earth history. And we've also created a, a series of new uh, maps that show the different places within the United States where you can find rocks of that age. And so, you know, just as an example, if, if you were interested in, you know, finding out where in the United States you might find a dinosaur fossil, you'd want to go to, you know, a map that shows uh, out where outcroppings are of Mesozoic aged rocks from the, from the age of dinosaurs. So, you know, I grew up in Wisconsin. I wanted to know if, you know, I could find a dinosaur in my backyard. Regrettably, the answer is no, because there's no, you know, we can all see there's no green colored Mesozoic aged rocks 
anywhere in um, in Wisconsin. Um, I already showed you the the geologic maps page. This is or, or some examples of geologic maps. This is just another way to to find them if you know you were interested in comparing maps across different um, different states. And then it also leads to um, quick back pages and then uh, some broader information. And we'll we'll get to that here in just a just a second. So I think with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And um, Don, if you'd like to introduce the road trip. And I will share again. So uh, here is uh, the, the road trip page. And uh, it's uh, following the adventures of uh, Gilbert D. Snail. Um, uh, who is traveling across the U.S. and uh, sending postcards along the way. Um, and you can follow us on the social media platforms. Um, we have not gotten uh, to the, or Gilbert has not yet gotten to uh, the West yet, but you can see the states that he's uh, been through so far. And uh, um, there are uh, trivia questions for each state and postcards from each state that you can click on and see where uh, Gilbert is and what he's up to and um, kind of kind of fun to follow him along there. Um, and, I, uh, and you can also uh, submit um, photos uh, for, um, for following Gilbert. Uh, and uh, he's also been featured on the Weather Channel. So uh, I think that's about all I need to say about Gilbert and I'll pass it back to, uh, back to John, I think. Yep. Thanks, Tom. Let's see, I'm gonna share my screen again here. I'll go back to where I was. Okay, I'm gonna scroll up to the top. So now, um, you know, we've, we've introduced some of the, you know, some of the different features of, of the Earth at Home website, but the part of the website that we wanna spend the rest of the, uh, workshop talking about our our regional guides. So I'm gonna I'm on the regional guide button here. I'm just gonna scroll down and hit main page. We'll start there. Um, so you know one of the big uh, components of Earth at Home that we're focused on developing right now are our regional guides to earth science. And I want to acknowledge that this is being developed. Um, currently from a grant by the Institute of Museum and Library Services to, uh, to PRI, the, the Paleontological Research Institution where we all work in, in Ithaca, New York. Um, these, these regional guides to earth science are all, uh, much of the content is derived from um, a series of, of publications that PRI produced over the last 20 years called the Teacher Friendly Guides uh, to, uh, to earth science. And that's a project that my colleague, Rob Ross, uh, let, uh, led, um, Rob, would you like to say a little bit about the teacher friendly guide series before, um, we jump into some of the content from the TFGs that's been moved to earth at home? Uh, sure. Yeah. I'll just take a minute. Um, so I will share my screen. And go to the website known as uh, priweb.org. And uh, it might be a little confusing, but we are an organization, a physical organization based in Ithaca, New York, with one of the largest research collections in, in, in North America of, of fossils. Uh, we're an affiliate of Cornell University. And um, we have a very wide ranging um, education and outreach program. Um, Earth at Home is certainly the centerpiece of, of that, that online component. And so um, in Ithaca, we have a couple of physical spaces that where the community vis visits us. So we have a Museum of the Earth and a Cayuga Nature Center. If you're, I know we're a long way away from you, but if you're ever in upstate New York, uh, we'd love to have you visit. So we're in um, uh, basically in the center of, of New York State, and uh, you can visit those venues on the geologic history of the region and local environmental sciences. 
Um, and then there's, uh, as you can see up at the top of this menu here, there's a Museum of the Earth, Cayuga Nature Center, Earth at Home, which is what we're talking about today. And then there's the PRI section of the website that contains information about the, the uh, research side of the organization and about um, a lot of the uh, education programs that we do. And under uh, Learn and Teach, you can get an overview of some of the other aspects of, of our outreach program. Uh, but you know, right up at the top, of course, is Earth at Home. Um, but we also have teacher-friendly guides to earth science. And so the, in short, the, the idea behind these guides, which we started working on uh, over 20 years ago, was to provide for teachers a user-friendly way to access the geology of their region without having to, to dive into the technical literature. Um, and that was focused on a broader area than just a part of a state or maybe a state, because of course, geology doesn't know state boundaries. So we tried to focus on these, these larger regions. And over the course of, of many years and some grants from the National Science Foundation and others, we put together a, a, a book for each region of seven regions of the country. And so um, you can see there uh, Northeast, Southeast and so on. And there is one for the, the Western US here. And there's a, there's a downloadable version that you can, um, it's a PDF you can download for each region uh, or, and we actually have hard copies of these as well um, that you can order. However, um, Earth at Home is a big step forward in taking the content that's in these guides, adding to it, making it more accessible, adding images, updating it, so on and so forth, and really making it attractive for a very wide range of audiences. So um, uh, if, you know, if you're interested in this kind of book form, um, you can still get these for free uh, if you want to download them or order them. Um, but Earth at Home is kind of the, the future expanded version of this with, with so much more. Um, and so, Don, uh, John, I guess I will hand it back to you to tell the rest of the story. Great. Thank you, Rob. Okay, so here we are. Um, in case you went and looked at something else, we're back here at the Earth at Home uh, you know, top menu bar. You can just hit regional guides if you wanna find your way back to where we are right here. So uh, this map right here looks something like the, the covers of the books that Rob was, the teacher-friendly guide series that Rob was um, just sharing with you. So this is a, obviously a map of the United States. It's carved up into um, eight major regions, uh, Hawaii being the, the eighth region. Um, and the maps themselves are divided into, you can see the different color bandings on the map. The, um, these equate to what are known as different physiographic provinces. And a physiographic province is basically a region um, that's defined by both its geologic history and its modern day topography. And so it's useful to sort of talk about, you know, different aspects of the earth science of, um, of these physiographic provinces. And so that's how we've divided up a lot of the content in the, uh, in this part of, of earth at home. Now we've made, we're, um, we initially, we're trying to, com uh, complete the, the transfer of all of this content from the teacher friendly guide series to, um, earth at home in a year. It looks like it's going to take us closer to a year and a half to complete that, but I think we've made really good progress so far. Um, we've, we've got content online now for the southeastern United States, the south central part of the United States, the southwest. And then recently we, we finished up the west, which includes um, Hawaii and Alaska. Uh, we're, Liz and I are currently working on developing content for the north central United States, so the, the region from Idaho to the Dakotas and Nebraska. A little bit later this year, we'll finish up the Midwest. We're hoping to have that done by. Um, 
uh, hopefully the end of the year, and then uh, we'll finish up the Northeast in the first half of, of next year. So we expect by next June or so that we'll have content online for the entire United States. Um, we're getting there. We're sort of going in a, a clockwise fashion around the country. Okay, so what's on what's on this page? This is sort of the you know the navigational page for all of these different regional guides. I'm going to scroll down to the Western U.S., um, but please be aware Hawaii is is down here as well. So I'm going to go to the main page for the West. Uh, the West includes let's see one, two, three, four, five, six different physiographic provinces. Alaska is so large, of course, that we we've, we've sort of lumped everything together for for that state. Um, each region is again divided up um, into topics that are, are sort of, well, regional in scale. Um, so topics like geologic history, glaciers, climate, and earth hazards are covered at the, at, at the entire scale of the, of the Western United States. And then cer uh, certain other topics are covered at the narrower scale of um, individual physiographic provinces. So for example, there's pages about uh, the rocks of the basin and range region of the Western US, which covers nearly all of um, Nevada and, and parts of Southern California. Um, there's a page devoted to just the fossils of the basin and range, the topography of the basin and range, as well as energy and mineral resources. Same sort of thing for the other physiographic provinces of the West, the Columbia Plateau, um, the Rocky Mountain region, which just forms this tiny little corner of northeastern um, Washington state, uh, the Cascade and Sierra Mountain region and the Pacific border, as well as Alaska. Um, Liz is going to introduce um, a couple of the, of the pages on this part of uh, Earth at Home. So I'm going to stop sharing and hand it to Liz. Uh, okay, so let's see. So I'm going to just share two sections from the uh, Western US. So we go to the main page. The first thing I'll share is one of the fossils pages and I'll just kind of go through uh, how these pages are laid out. So we'll look at the Columbia Plateau region. This is Eastern Washington, Eastern Oregon and a very tiny bit of Northern Nevada. Uh, click on fossils. So each page starts with a header image. We try to look for something pretty or spectacular to represent the region. So here we have a horse skull. Um, so fossils of the Columbia Plateau, the, the next thing that comes up just as a reminder is what region we're looking at. Uh, beneath that is a page snapshot. So it just tells you what you're going to find on this. And it looks like I need to update that because it says basin and range. All right, so topics covered on this page then. So this little uh, contents at the top actually has anchor links in it. So if you click on an anchor link, it'll zoom you to the part of the page uh, that connects to that link. So if you're looking for something specific and you just want to scroll down the page uh, past everything, that's one easy way to do it. The next section is the credits, which just goes through the history of how the content was developed. A uh, little thing with page last updated. At this point, most of the updates are going to be links, uh, for instance, to other parts of the basin and range. And then uh, a little thing that just tells you what the top image is. So then scrolling down the page, um, Rob mentioned that these were developed from a book series, uh, the Teacher Friendly Guides book series. So what we tried to do in moving it to the web is obviously reformat it to make it a little bit more web friendly. Uh, update the images with nice color pictures. Um, as John mentioned, a lot of these have Creative Commons licensing. Some of them are public domain. Some of them are uh, things that PRI produced in-house. This particular picture was one that happened to be, have been taken for the Teacher Friendly Guide series. So in the Columbia Plateau, there's not much Paleozoic or Mesozoic fossils. Uh, mostly it's Cenozoic. And a lot of that uh, Cenozoic material is from John Day fossil beds. So this page just basically goes through a lot of uh, John Day fossil beds from the Eocene, I think until the late Miocene. So a lot of pictures here of mammals and plants, which is what we find in the Columbia Plateau in this region. Um, 
So going to the bottom of the page then, the page ends with resources. Uh, the first resources highlighted are more resources from the Paleontological Research Institution. And in some pages, you'll see resources from the Paleontological Research Institution and partners. So this is, these would be projects that we've done uh, with other institutions. Uh, so things here include virtual or digital atlas uh, virtual collection, which John showed you earlier, digital encyclopedia of ancient life, um, which connects to the virtual collection. Another thing here, earth science of, of uh, the Northwestern United States fossils of the Columbia Plateau. So I've been trying as we build these pages to connect the different elements of individual physiographic regions. So you can explore earth science based on sort of a geographic region of the United States, but also you have links to explore physiographic regions. And then the quick guide to common fossils. And then at the end, there are just a few navigation buttons to look for uh, additional resources. These are mostly sort of literature cited or other websites that you might want to look at for more in-depth information. And then things to go back to either the Western US main page or uh, fossils of the United States. So the other page that I will show is uh, the climate page. So actually I should mention for Western United States, there are two climate pages. This isn't typical. Usually the climate uh, uh, covers the whole region, but in the West, there's a main climate page which covers California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada. And then if you scroll down to Alaska, it has a separate climate page. Um, because the issues fa Alaska faces are a little bit different because of it, its uh, high latitude and permafrost. So go to climate. Uh, the page setup is the same. It talks about what, what the region is representing. It's got these anchor links when the page was last updated. And basically the climate pages are set up uh, first discussing the present climate of the region. So it just goes a little bit into average temperature, average precipitation. Uh, a little bit of what the regional climate variation is. Of course, the West is very interesting because parts of it are very dry, but there are also, you know, areas along the ocean that are very wet and high ele elevation areas that get a lot of snow. Um, then past climate. So this just goes through uh, the, the whole kind of earth. It's kind of a combination of the earth history and the climate of the region. So you get a little fossil, some paleo maps in there. And then further down on the page is future climate. So this talks about the climate outlook in uh, the West. So it's a mixed picture right now, as uh, probably all of you know. Um, the Western US is doing very well, for instance, in developing renewables, but it's really being heavily impacted by climate change. Uh, so in terms of future climate, there have been additions since the teacher-friendly guide. Uh, was published, for instance, coverage of the heat dome from 2021 that hit the Pacific Northwest, uh, coverage of the drying of some of the reservoirs in the West, which have uh, right now affected water resources, and they're also threatening to affect power generation in the West. Uh, discussion a little bit of snowpack, which is a, is a big thing in terms of supplying water to the West and also some discussion of wildfire risk, which is also a big uh, risk in the West right now. So um, that's kind of the layout of these pages. Uh, you'll have a chance to explore them on your own, but I'm happy to take any questions in the chat. And um, I think I will pass it back to Don. All right, so next up is, um, what am I talking about? <laughs> oh, um, we're doing, we're exploring and preparing to share it then. Okay, so, um, so uh, dig on in and um, find something interesting from your state or your favorite Western state that you'd like to share. Um, and remember that the search bar is up at the top there. And uh, just uh, go ahead and dig in and, um, we're gonna um, I, uh, uh, give you until the top of the hour to explore. Is that a reasonable amount? I don't know. I think we can just kind of maybe play it by ear. I don't. I don't know if if, if folks have already, 
you know, poked around a little bit and found something to share. Otherwise, maybe we just maybe we give a few minutes and and see. Okay, let's give you let's give you three minutes and see where we are. How's that sound? Um, there's a question in the chat about uh, lesson plans. There's uh, there's not lesson plans per se, but there's um, some pretty good, what I hope is some pretty good discussion of um, using virtual field work uh, in line with NGSS, um, uh, in line with the NGSS standards, but it's, um, it's not laid out quite as as directly as a lesson plan. Um, I'll put a, a link in for one example of that uh, in just a second here. So some of the VFEs have teacher guides that um, give you some direction on how to do that. Um, and those are at least sometimes in the form of Google Docs. Here is one example for that from the um, Oregon Coast VFE. Should we maybe give another minute and then ask for some folks to share? Yeah, that sounds good. Anyone want to share? Oh, why don't I start? I'll start with one of my favorite places on the planet. Um, and that's the whole rainforest on the Olympic Peninsula. Um, and I just uh, searched for um, for whole rainforest and uh, that came up on the climate page for the Western Guide. Um, and then uh, once the page opened, I, I searched again for Ho and uh, it brought this this beautiful picture and I'll um, note that uh, my first experience in the Ho rainforest was driving in in the middle of the night and setting up our um, our tent by the headlights of our car and then the next morning it, uh, when the sun came out walking out into this in 300 foot tall Douglas firs and it was just one of the most stunning moments of my life. I, I will never, ever forget it. Um, so does somebody else want to share a, a thing that they were looking at? Uh, 
Um, I'll share. Um, so I was just checking out the different field trips. And interestingly enough, a lot of the links in, um, in, in the uh, uh, Earth at Home were blocked at my school, not because there's um, questionable content, but just because it's the first time that someone has clicked on it. And kind of that's how it works. Like, yeah. if I go back to it in a couple of days, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. But anyways, check out some of the field trips. And it just is really interesting, kind of diversity of the field trips on there. And just they're all they all seem to be uh, in kind of different format. Like one of them, I, I clicked on the Calaveras Fault, and it actually brought me to like Google Earth. And there were some pictures to click on, which was really cool. So you know, I hope to uh, just really um, explore those a little bit and see what, which of those I can use. Great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And there's a, there are a lot of different sorts of ways of doing BFEs. One of the things that we try to do with ours is uh, move away from having the instructor point things out and have students figure things out. And, and that's, that's part of the philosophy there, which hopefully we did okay on. Other things that folks uh, found of interest? I don't, I don't mind sharing. Um, Go for it. Um, it didn't end up being in the West. I don't know if that's a huge. That's okay. um, so uh, I did some work with Texas A&M's G Camp for teachers over the summer. And so I have a lot of stuff I've grabbed from there. And so when he was just talking about that, I decided to just put in Bios Caldera because that was one of the places we stopped. And I took some pictures and things like that. So um, it was kind of nice to go to a specific feature uh, and then really get like a lot of the different um, information, like the wing, all the different formations and the time. It's just nice because then I can match up these pictures with something that it's pretty, it's teacher friendly, but I think it could be student friendly if it was uh, some of this stuff, or at least there's like a nice point to go to go off of for kids. So then like you can just build the story around your, your, you know, places that you've traveled a little more. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to kind of using this in conjunction with some of the like pictures and things that I've taken. Yeah. And I believe there's a via Caldera <laughs> um, VFE, but I have not looked at it in a long time. So I don't really remember what it's like, but we did a workshop there uh, like eight years ago or so. Cool. Okay. Yeah, and I'll add, I'll add as well, um, Scott, you know, if you, if, if we have, you know, if you have like really nice pictures of some of these places that you've been to, and we have a little bit of content on Earth at Home, and, you know, if, you, if you'd be interested in sharing the images, we'd love to, yeah, you know, we'd, we'd love to share them if, uh, you know, on, we'd love to integrate them on the, on the page, I guess the only caveat is, you know, we want everything to have Creative Commons licensing, but if you're, if you're cool with that, we'd of course provide acknowledgement to you and, and everything. Just want to throw that out there. Yeah, I, I took a bunch of 360 degree photos and we went all the way around like Texas, Colorado and New Mexico. So I grabbed a lot of stuff and I, I work, I'm, I like how I'm working for them now in the summer. So cool. I've done that trip twice. So I have a lot of really good things from like tent rocks. I got, a, a, so this is cool that I can like, you know, because the ones for the, the teacher friendly guys for the Northeast, I love, I like read them and I didn't realize there was, there was for all these different places, but this is nice mm -hmm. for students to access this. Yeah, great. Yeah, so there's the link for the VFE, which is a, a Google Earth based VFE. And, and, and I will note that I, I, I have not looked at it in quite some time, so I don't remember the details of it, but it's there. I know it's a stunning place. Other uh, things that folks might share? I'm going to turn on the light. It's getting dark. I'll uh, mention that um, one of the, or maybe a couple of the VFEs that we're calling case studies uh, are in the Western region. So um, I'll share screen briefly to um, to show. This is on the. Um, it's not directly in the regional area. It's it's in the uh, the virtual fieldwork part. Um, but one of the 
BFEs is for Central California, and there's another one for, well, there are <laughs> two from Central California. Uh, and both of these, if you dig into them, I won't go to them at the moment. Um, they actually take you off of the site to another place. But they do have lesson plans um, for um, teachers and um, activities for, for students associated with them. Um, but um, these are uh, wonderful places in on the west coast of California that are very famous for their fossil faunas. And our, our, the fossil faunas are um, a big part of some museum collections. And so the VFE is really highlighting these places from which these terrific research collections were made that spawn, have spawned off many publications and so on, but that most people don't get a chance to, to go to, uh, either because it's, it's uh, inaccessible or it's just too far away. Any, any other places that you would find interesting or interesting things that you found in searching around the website? This is George Bartuska down in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, I was looking at Hawaii and it reminded me of something that I just wanted to share. You know, 1964, uh, the earthquake in Alaska is still considered the worst earthquake to be experienced by the United States. And in 2014, they had their 50th year anniversary. And I was teaching Earth Based Science then, and I contacted them in Alaska, the USGS in Alaska, got all kinds of DVDs and materials. And I was trying to set up a Skype. You know, this is before COVID. I tried to set up a Skype, and the guy said, Sorry, we only work nine to five. Obviously, the time difference in Anchorage and Florida was a big difference. And I just happened to be going to the hurricane conference. I'm a meteorologist. And I was talking to one of the guys from the National Hurricane Center. And he said, you know, one of our guys is also a geologist. And he just transferred to Hawaii. And we're open 24-7. <laughs> so I called him. And sure enough, he said, heck, I'm, all, I'm up all night anyway. Who cares? And I was able to do an incredible session from my first class in the morning all day long. Uh -huh. So those people are out there and the National yeah. Weather Service is open 24 seven. So just thought I'd share that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. great. <laughs> that's a super cool idea. Yeah, and I'll, I'll note we, uh, um, back in one of the earlier uh, grants that funded the VFE work, I, um, I Zoomed in or Skyped into classrooms around the country from the brink of Niagara Falls. I actually, I telecommute from Buffalo. So Niagara Falls is a half an hour away from me. Um, and uh, just standing at the, on Goat Island there in the, in the middle of the Niagara River and looking at the falls and talking to classrooms around the country was pretty cool. And I, I'd love to figure out how to fund doing more of that because I thought it was pretty powerful. The, the National Weather Service wrote up what we did in their newsletter and I have it stored on my computer somewhere if anybody ever wants it. Great. We, yeah, we, we would love, I think, to have some more information about that. Who would I send it to? Any one of uh, the, the instructors, the, our emails are all on the agenda. So you, you could send that maybe, sounds like it, it would maybe best go to a Don or, or to me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put my, uh, I've got multiple email addresses that all go to the same place, but uh, this is one that works. It's on my other computer, but I'll do it. Other um, questions, comments, things to share. Um, I, I did also put 
uh, some links to some coming events uh, and to our educator newsletter, which uh, comes out five times a year, uh, lined up with just after the beginning of each marking period in New York State, which means uh, the and a summer issue, which means that the next issue will come out in mid-September. Um, and with each um, each newsletter, we announce uh, one or more free online workshops like this one um, for uh, the uh, for the. September newsletter. Um, we've got uh, three workshops that we're doing in association with the Geological Society of America's uh, conference in Denver, but we're doing um, the K-12 uh, programming for the meeting is all online and all free. And so if you uh, were still finalizing the, the details on those workshops, but if you want the info, uh, just subscribe uh, to the uh, Learning Earth newsletter. Uh, and that link is at the bottom of the agenda, and I will also put it in the chat. Uh, here it is. And you can also uh, find the newsletter archive on that site. Um, and uh, uh, I know it's the weekend of October 8th and 9th, um, but we're still finalizing the times of those workshops. There, there will be three of them. Um, one is more or less a repeat of this one on Earth at Home. Another one is addressing uh, climate emotions in the classroom. And the third is um, moving away from fire for our energy source. So, um, and that'll partly talk about the deep geothermal project at Cornell, which is uh, just completed drilling a two mile deep hole to see if we can heat the Cornell campus um, with uh, deep geothermal energy. Um, and uh, it'll address more than that, but uh, that's, that's a, a key piece. Um, and I also put in the uh, link for the science in the virtual pub series and our kickoff speaker is a week from tomorrow night and that's Brianna uh, Pobiner, uh, who is at the Smithsonian, and she'll be talking about the real paleo diet. She um, studies, uh, she's a paleoanthropologist at the Smithsonian who studies human evolution and, and the evolution of our diet. So that'll be very, very cool. I'm really looking forward to that talk. You can see most, we've got most of the fall schedules um, posted on the Science in the Pub website and uh, um, and what else do we want to say? I guess we can just um, open it up for any other broader discussion. Are, are there you know resources on Earth at home that you think you might you might use yourself? Are there resources that we don't have yet that you'd, you'd like us to to add? Any feedback would be welcome. It's a quiet group tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we do have um, uh, an exit survey. Um, you know, if we're if we're winding down, um, it's a very short, just a couple of very brief questions. Get your feedback on um, uh, what you learned this evening, and just on how you think. You know, if if we were to continue to do um, uh, presentations like this. What would you what What would you recommend we we tweak? Um, and uh, thank you so much for for coming this evening. We're really appreciative. Uh, we know you are probably busy as you are getting into the next school year or or work <laughs> or whatever you're doing. You might not all be teachers. Um,
So I, I happen to mention in the chat, like an Ask a Scientist link. And I've seen this on like astronomy websites, like ask an astronomer and a student or a teacher could, you know, um, put in a question and then it's responded to in some way. I think that would be cool because, you know, my students always have questions that, that they can't find the answer to and I don't know the answer to. And um, I, I've always been kind of looked for that resource. Yeah, thanks for that, Matt. I think that's I think that's really great. You know, one of the things we always kind of, you know, it's it it sometimes is a little bit of a bandwidth issue because if we get you know if we get a lot of questions, you know, we want to respond to all the questions we get. Um, you know, so we kind of it, it it takes a little bit of balancing, but I really I really like the idea. You know, we we get a lot of requests at the museum from people all over the world, really, we get emailed, you know, like every day, what is this fossil? You know, what have I found here? And, you know, we love getting those, especially when we're able to give an answer, when we actually do know what it, mm -hmm. what it is. You know, this is sort of a component that I'd like to see added to Earth at Home after we finish sort of this, the process of, um, you know, getting this sort of state level or regional level content finished up between now and June, I, I think that that kind of feature would be really awesome to add sort of in the phase two of this, this project. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that once we have sort of all the baseline regional content developed, it's going to make it easy when, when questions come up from students, so we can point to, you know, one, we'll have all the resources online then, and then we can kind of direct folks to, you know, places where they can find additional additional content, but the idea is, is awesome. And it's definitely something we'd like to, we'd like to add down the road. So thank, thank you for that. Yeah, and we, we really do our best to answer all our emails from teachers and students, <laughs> especially. I mean, not, yeah. Not, Good at other people's emails, but I, I don't <laughs> good at answering teachers and students' emails. Any other questions, comments, things you'd like to take a deeper look at? Well, while you've got us here. If, if you do think of something later, we would be happy to hear your ideas. Um, if you're exploring, we know you just, you were just introduced to this resource. So uh, it may be a little while before you know about something that maybe you feel like is missing. Um, so please uh, don't hesitate to be in touch in the future. Uh, this, yeah, there's um, Agenda will continue to be live, I think. So if you if you ever need to go back, you for, you know forgot one of the links or something like that. If you if you save the agenda, uh, then you'll always have access to our email addresses and other stuff that's on it. Yeah, and I, I will link the YouTube recording to the agenda as well. Yeah, and again, if um, if you'd like updates about Earth at Home, there's a there's a box at the bottom of every single page. All you have to do is type in your email, and again, we we promise not to spam you, um, but we'll send you updates every every once in a while with new things that we've added. There's also a link at the bottom of every page um, to a to an to email. So if you you know just click on that, it'll uh, you'll be able to send off a, an email to us um, if you have any feedback or. There's anything you um, might like to contribute yourself to, to Earth at Home, if that's the case, get in touch and we'll talk about it. Thank you all for joining us. We're on yeah. time. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for being here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Take Bye -bye. care. Martina, do you have a, a question? Yeah, she just said thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
think we can probably stop the recording. Oh, yes. You the YouTube.